Welcome to Module 35 in this series of short lectures on statistical quality assurance and statistical process improvement. We've been discussing control charting and now want to address the issue of what one should do if one is collecting measurement data and one is faced with a sample size of n equal to 1. Uh, to call several observations a sample or a rational subgroup uh, really implicitly assumes or guarantees that those observations are collected under uh, essentially constant physical conditions. Uh, there are many process monitoring contexts where that makes no sense, where uh, it's not safe to assume that even two successive uh, process outcomes are generated by the same physical circumstances. Uh, that is, there are times where the only reasonable sample size in process monitoring is sample size of one. The only rational subgroup, the only rational sample size is a sample size of one. This module concerns two issues that arise when sample sizes are one. In the first place, we're going to discuss briefly and dismiss the possibility of charting moving ranges. And then we're going to talk a bit about what could be done towards the estimation of a process standard deviation uh, when sample sizes are one. Where rational subgroups are one, uh, there's really only one choice for what's going to be plotted, and that's the uh, measurement itself. Now, you could transform the uh, scale of measurement, take a transformation, uh, but ultimately what one is going to plot is uh, x. Uh, people are used to making x bar and r charts and thinking about one chart for uh, process mean and another chart for process spread uh, and are sometimes then uh, tempted to say well there ought in, in addition to plotting X which is sort of like an X bar if, if it is one uh, maybe there could be something to be done in terms of process spread uh, you can't use a range of one but maybe you could take successive process values and make not ranges but what one might call moving ranges. So moving range at time i is the uh, distance between the current observation and the previous observation. It's the absolute difference between xi and xi minus 1. Uh, when people try to do that they usually uh, say, well, let's use a, an X chart, an individual's chart uh, that is essentially an X bar chart with N equal to 1. So that's mean plus or minus uh, 3 sigma over the square root of 1 for control limits, that is, these control limits for individuals. And for moving ranges, uh, just use an upper control limit that's based on say uh, D2 for a sample, or a pseudo sample, a pretend sample of size 2. Basic sample size is 1, but you're putting together uh, two observations, uh, the current one and the previous one, to make a moving range here. So maybe you use a little D, a big D2, sorry, based on the sample size of 2. Uh, that turns out to be not such a great idea. Uh, it, For one thing, that choice of uh, control limits uh, has a, a very large far, false alarm rate. Uh, instead of being uh, of producing an all OK ARL uh, on the order of 370, which is uh, what you expect when you're running an individual's chart. Uh, the addition of that uh, moving range chart uh, drops the uh, all OK ARL 
down to only 105. So instead of on average waiting 370 observations between false alarms, one's getting one about every 105 observations. You could think about trying to quote unquote fix that by replacing 3 with some bigger number, uh, big D2 with some bigger number. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can look in section 4.4 of Vardaman and Job's uh, book uh, and see what's there. Turns out that doesn't work very well either. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, to our circumstance, to our knowledge, the, the, there's only one circumstance in which adding a moving range chart to an individual's chart makes any sense. Uh, and that's the case where what you're trying to detect in terms of uh, not all okay process behavior is uh, some kind of oscillation of consecutive individuals. Uh, there a moving range chart uh, is more effective than the individual's chart at seeing uh, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, uh, oscillating. Uh, process behavior. Uh, so basically what we're suggesting here is that the semi-standard motivation or semi-standard uh, attempt to use a moving range chart is ill-advised and it's not something that we recommend. Uh, there's a second issue here that sounds like it's related but is not really related. Uh, and that's the question of how does one estimate a process standard deviation when one has only samples of size 1. Uh, there's really not any honest way to do this. Uh, one needs a, a sample or samples of size at least 2 if one was going to estimate process spread. Uh, but about the best you can do that is, uh, well, as I say here, less dishonest than others, uh, is to use an average moving range of successive observations. Make an estimate based on an average moving range. Now, I am not saying control chart moving ranges. I'm saying compute moving ranges. Uh, and use them to estimate uh, process standard deviation. The rationale for this is that uh, moving ranges of successive observations uh, will be inflated by any uh, movement of a process mean, but they're going to be less inflated than anything else that one could think of. Uh, and so it's, it's reasonable to expect that uh, variability in successive pairs of observations to be less affected by uh, movement of process mean than any other type uh, of, uh, of, of grouping of observations that we could think of. So what one might do is take an average moving range and divide it by little d2 uh, based on uh, the little d2 is for quote unquote sample size 2. And think of that as a conservative estimator of process standard deviation, as it's going to tend to overestimate sigma uh, in those instances where the process mean is not constant. Uh, it's the best one available. Uh, it's not perfect by any means, but it is the best one available. So as a Small example here, if one has uh, in succession those values 5, 3, 9, 10, and so on, uh, moving ranges, this first one is the difference, the absolute difference between 5 and 3. 6 is the absolute difference between 3 and 9. 1 is the absolute difference between 9 and 10, and so on. Uh, and these values are going to vary because process standard deviation, or they do vary because process standard deviation is not zero. 
but they also may vary beyond uh, that uh, because short-term variability uh, is not the only thing that's going on, but there might be change in uh, uh, process mean. Uh, so these really aren't uh, on a sample ranges, uh, but they're potentially over-representing uh, process standard deviation. But they're, to some degree, the best we can do. So if you take their average and then divide by little d2 based on sample size 2, uh, there is an estimate of sigma uh, based on average moving ranges. So to recapitulate here, to be absolutely explicit, what we're saying and recommending in this module, when we're faced with uh, control charting for sample sizes of one, the best thing to do for control charting is to simply make an X chart and not to uh, make a moving range chart. In addition to that, uh, the best estimate that one can make, uh, it's not a perfect estimate, but the least bad estimate one can make of process standard deviation is an average moving range divided by little d2 based on uh, two observations.